on August 1, 2024, in Delphi, Indiana, at the Carroll County Courthouse, Detective David Vito testified about false confessions that Keegan Klein made about his father, Tony Klein, and his involvement in the Delphi murders. Klein made these false allegations while he was being questioned at the Grissom Air Force Base in August of 2022, prior to the arrest of Richard Allen. Vito also testified that Keegan was the primary user of the Anthony Schatz account, but that a second user was likely Keegan's father, Tony Klein. The Anthony Schatz catfish account was communicating with Liberty German the day of her murder and in the weeks prior. Vito stated that the Schatz account also communicated with Libby's friends. The court heard testimony that Keegan Klein had told detectives at Grissom Air Force Base that he had gone to Delphi the day of the murders with his father in a red jeep and that his dad had come out of the woods after an hour or two covered in blood. In their September 9th interlocutory appeal that objected to the order ruling against a third-party Klein defense at trial, Allen's defense team further argued facts, citing that law enforcement tried to tie Richard Allen to Tony Klein and arguably only interrogated Richard Allen due to their initial belief that Tony Klein and Richard Allen knew each other and committed the crimes together. Lieutenant Jerry Holman actually transported Keegan to an area near the crime scene to corroborate the details of what he said took place that day. Vito also revealed that there was a small investigative report that pertained to the Delphi murders that stemmed from the separate tentacle case for the CSAM charges for which Keegan Klein has been convicted of. I obtained a copy of the final transcripts and exhibits from Klein's sentencing in the fall of 2023, which included State's Exhibit No. 4A. It was an incident narrative authored by Trooper Master Brian Harshman of the Indiana State Police with details regarding an investigation that took place after December 6, 2021. I believe this is the report that Detective Vito referenced pertaining to the Delphi murder investigation. Aspen Connor and I attended the three-day hearings in Delphi and released a 10-part series on his channel. Here is the excerpt from Detective Vito's testimony that day. Official transcripts were never released. Detective Vito's testimony was very compelling and he was a confident and knowledgeable detective on the stand. Hey everyone, I feel like I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but welcome back once again. Um, this is this is Turbo and I doing our deep dive into our um, hello our comprehensive notes over the um, the July thirty the July thirtieth, thirty first, and August first hearings in Delphi. Um, we are 
uh, we are finally on the third day, um, which is the motion for limine. This will be part three of um, of of that day. And um, we are going to pick up where we left off, which um, if anyone has been watching in order, we um, we just finished off with the testimony of Todd Click. Um, and we are now, we went into a break at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday, the, um, the 1st of August. And we came back into the courtroom at 4.40 p.m. Um, David Vito um, was announced as the next witness. And I think that we all know the name um, David Vito because, one, he's been involved with Delphi for a long time. But, two, he was very instrumental instrumental in the um, Keegan Klein aspect to the case. So I am going to let you take the reins here, um, Turbo, and then I will add my notes as um, as I see, um, you know, whatever you, I don't hear you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So I, I was anxiously waiting for Detective David Vito to testify I, at the main I, I knew you hearing. were. <laughs> and well, it, yeah, I was waiting since Fort Wayne because, of course, everything got canceled. He had been there that day. Um, and um, so, uh, yes, I was very interested in what Detective Vito was going to testify about. And um, so upon taking the stand, he he told us that he was. And can I, can I stop you really quickly? Yeah, sure. So. And and just for the record, um, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but um, you, you know, you were very, you know, you, you really looked into the um, the client aspect of the case pretty pretty. Um, I would say more than a lot of people that I know, um, to the point where I, I, you've even read all of the court documents from Keegan's case, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, you have so you I've read so a you lot. You, <laughs> You have a pretty intimate knowledge to the um to yes. like the intricacies of that case, so you know a lot about David Vito, and that's why I wanted you to take the reins on this one. So, for anyone that yep. didn't know, I just kind of wanted to give them that that um. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been talking about him for two years. <laughs> Yeah. And I had to explain to a lot of people who he was for for quite some time. Now, you know, I think people are generally more aware in the case, but even even still, um, he. He, he worked, you know, he worked extensively on uh, certain angles and certainly he was up yeah. to his eyeballs in the Klein. So he was, he was so much yes, younger I than I thought. Intimately familiar. I, and I've, I've seen pictures of him, but yeah, when, you he, mentioned he, that. Mm -hmm. when he got up on the stand, I, um, I didn't expect him to, to be as young as he was, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, and he, maybe he's yeah, not, he's maybe he just young. looked young. I don't know. But anyway, um, that, that was my, that was no, my take. He's young. Not sure how old he is. I mean, he's in his thirties, I think, because because you know they did one of the road. Uh, you know, I was surprised that he was he was he was just a trooper when he started on this case. And um, Superintendent Carter had said on one of the road shows that they do for ISP, he had mentioned about young, and you know, young trooper Vito. And of course, he's now he's since been uh, promoted to detective, and now I have no doubt in my mind it's from the work that he's done on this case. But I was it's surprised called a, it's called when I watched that and ability. interview. It, it, absolutely, yeah. I he's like I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Okay, so let's just get that <laughs> let's get that right out of the way because he's been up to his eyeballs, and and I know it because <laughs> because I've spent some time and. On that angle that he has been looking at um, so for so long, and I mean, it's been just grueling, all of that. And certainly he was um, hugely impactful in the conviction and sentencing of Keaton Klein for the separate, totally separate uh, tentacle case from, from this, if you will, uh, for his child sexual exploitation um, charges. Um, but anyway, so let me get into Detective Vito. Um, he was briefly assigned on the Delphi um, murder investigation in 2017. He became full-time in April of 2019. Um, he was asked if he worked with Nicole Robinson, 
Agent uh, Nicole Robinson from the FBI, he indicated that he did not. He was a member of the Unified Command Center after um, 2019. After 2019, and I, Baldwin had asked him if he was part of the brass. And Vito responded, I wouldn't say brass, but yes, I was a part of it. And so then Again, um, he was asked if he easy, looked. That's not an easy club <laughs> to break into, at, you know, with, a, with, you know, at the position he was at. Yeah. So that's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and Superintendent Carter had thanked him at the press conference announcing the arrest of Richard Allen in October uh, 31st, 2022. He was. Detective Vito was very much a critical member, in my opinion, from what everything that I've seen, and he was definitely part of of uh, of the Unified Command. Um, so he looked at Libby's phone contacts for 2017. He um, he investigated the Anthony Schatz profile. Um, there were communications with girls that were out outside of Delphi, um, and there were communications. Uh, Vito did confirm that there were communications between the Anthony Schatz profile and Libby. Um, sorry, it wasn't Baldwin, it was Rosie. Rosie asked Vito, was it Snapchat and Instagram that was uh, used for that communication? And Vito said, I believe it was just Snapchat. Um, so around March of 2019, he came on as part of the investigation, uh, full time, um, or he came on, sorry, in, in March of 2019, but it, in April, it was full time. Um, he was asked if he was working on someone else off of someone else's work product for, uh, prior to him coming on full time and he agreed with respect to Klein. And then Rosie asked if he could approach. He presented a three page exhibit labeled DDD. And that exhibit was the presser for from December 6, 2021, where ISP had gone to YouTube. Uh, Jeremy at, Clinton. At, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. He he was asking about the Anthony Schatz uh, profile. He made an appeal to the public. He had um, eight pictures that were released as part of that press um, press conference that they did online. Um, and Vito testified that yes, it was about Vince Kowalski. Um, and they cast a wide net. Um, on the Anthony Schatz profile, requesting assistance, it was a formal request to disseminate from around the world. Now, Vince Kowalski was a real live human mm -hmm. um, that Keegan had still used. Is. Yeah, he still is. <laughs> uh, Keegan had used, uh, you know, mortifyingly used his photo. Right. Um, for his uh, catfishing profile, as, the as had other people. Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, um, they believed largely at the time that um, sex was the motive for the murders. Right. Um, and then I'm going to let you take back over. Okay, so confirmation was made uh, for the Anthony Schatz account communicating with Liberty German on February 13th. 2017 that communication did occur as well as prior to february 13th 2017 so v detective Vito did confirm that on the stand he uh for the most part the anthony shots account was being used by keegan there was more than one person that used that account and he was asked who the other person was. Uh, Tony Klein, Keegan's father, did use the Anthony Schatz account. So that's been one question that has been up in the air forever. And Detective Vito did confirm that Tony Klein was the second user of the Anthony Schatz account. Um, uh, can I ask you a question? 
Sure. Did he? Did Vito actually say Tony Klein was was the second user, or mm-hmm. did or did he say um, that he that he that because of the IP address he he was most likely the second user? I I, I thought he said that he couldn't can con- conclusively confirm it. I did not write conclusively. Um, I'll just, I'll like, just like when he said because well, when he said on down? the when he said on the, he said on two thirteen, when um can, he was asked, do you can you conclusively say that um Keegan Klein is the one that was using the Anthony Schatz account? Oh, uh, for the thirteenth, you mean for the the morning of the thirteenth, and and he and he said, and he said no. Okay. Well, then you have for better detail than I do. What I wrote down was um, there was more than one person using the account. Who was the other? And then I it said Tony Klein, his father, used the Anthony Shots account. Now, I do not have a specific notation about February 13th. So if you do, please read it because I would like to hear it myself. Um. Okay, let me see. Let me, I'll see what I have here. Um, their communications were um on Snapchat up until and on two thirteen seventeen. Um, in August of twenty twenty three, um, Keegan Klein was brought to Grissom Air Force Base. Um, it was at Grissom Air Force Base where he made the claim that um that that he had been in the cemetery on two thirteen seventeen. Okay, that's way later. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So is that is that is that where you pick up where you started your notes again? But, but I'm just reading my my um Keegan notes. Okay, so specific to this part of his testimony though that I'm like that, that Grissom stuff is way lo- way later for me, um, but but just specific to the morning of is that is that where you have notes about about the Anthony Shots account at Grissom? Because that's um, way later no, for me. No, no, I, well, I that's not where I have those notes. But there's more. There's other. Um, you know, you know, you just go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I did not write down specific. You, you said he responded no. So I'm just wondering, was that right now in the testimony that Vito responded no that you wrote uh, down? He, 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 Vito was asked um, if he could be certain that it was Keegan Klein using the Anthony Schatz account on the morning of the 13th. And he said no, not conclusively. Keegan? Yes. Or Keegan? Okay, thanks. I don't have that specifically written down. No. Okay. And I don't I, have I, it. I didn't know if it was on cross or direct. Okay, good enough. Maybe it comes up later. I I haven't reviewed these. Um, just briefly for a different uh, a different and line that I the did. Re- the, re- the reason that, it, that that caught my attention was because for anyone I think that still wants to hold out hope, want, wanted to hold out hope, that there could be some sort of Klein involvement here. I was like, well, that was the crack in the door that Vito left. <laughs> <laughs> there were a few cracks, but okay. So, but we won't go down that path. I'm just going <laughs> to testify as to what, um, what was said. So, um, he stated that Keegan Klein owned a firearm. He was asked if he recovered it. Did you recover it? We were not able to locate the fire firearm. We had pictures of it. It was a Smith and Wesson 40 caliber. And then um, Rosie stated, well, the crime scene was processed and there was an unspent round there that was a 40 caliber round, same caliber. Um, so Vito testified that they did not actually recover the firearm, 
but they did have pictures of Dirk Hayes with a gun that was a 40 caliber and he was interviewed um, and and had various devices. So they could have called me to, they could have called me I would have told them where to go to get it. <laughs> So just for everyone that doesn't know, Dirk Hayes was the direct neighbor at 67 Canal Street in Peru. Uh, he was a friend of Keegan's and was the friend that Keegan stayed with when he moved out to Vegas. That's right. just a brief aside. <laughs> and, he has, and he has two lovely children, or three lovely children now, and, uh, and, and, and actually an, a very incredible mother. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. And has and has never ever been accused or implicated in anything to do with any of the any anything to do with his crimes. No, very good. Um, so there were various devices uh, that were taken on the twenty fifth, uh, twenty seventeen, at the from the Klein home. One or two iPhones, a Samsung, a tablet, an iPod, and th all of those or the majority of them had content for child sex abuse material. So, oh, this is, sex may have been a motive for this crime, and it was common knowledge amongst the Unified Command Center. And Vito testified that a separate case uh, was developed for the CSAM that had been recovered from Klein's uh, devices. Um, so, it was asked if if it was believed that sex was a motive and sex with two minors would have been. Um, Rosie said that the Anthony Schatz material was current and transmitting, and Vito agreed that it had spanned over years. At some point, Rosie stated that there was a polygraph done and Vito stated it was before that he was on the case Yeah. and Rosie indicated that there were resources being invested um, that they were um, that he had Keegan had denied and in the beginning that uh, Keegan had denied any connection with Liberty German and he did lie about the CSAM being on his device in 2017. Uh, and Vito stated that at first, Keegan, at first, Keegan Klein was lying, yes. And Rosie said, well, he wiped out the information on his phones. He deleted all of his apps. And then Vito said a specific app, apps, uh, Snapchat was the one. Um, he said there was, he testified there was unknown material that was lost and that he could have been involved. Rosie, uh, discussed the interview that was, that occurred in the vehicle on February 25th, 2017, which would have been when the raid happened. Um, and initially, uh, Vito stated initially that Keegan denied responsibility that he was beating himself up, saying he was a piece of crap, um, and that um, the Anthony Schatz profile wasn't his. He had lied. He said, oh, here's where it is, Aspen. He said, I don't know if Keegan Klein was the one communicating that day on February 13th. There you go. I, I did write that down. Um, he's testified that the week after the murders that uh, Keegan and his father had gone to Las Vegas and that that particular Vegas trip was pre-planned. Um, there was money that was given to Keegan to stay out in Vegas, but that was later. That happened after Keegan came back, after, the, after him and his father came back from Vegas to Peru. They went back. Yeah. And and then there was money given by Tony uh, to Keegan to stay out in Vegas. Um, that Vito testified that his alibi was not able to be corroborated. Um, and the information on what he was doing 
That day changed over time. Vito stated that they were never able to clear his alibi, uh, but they were able to disprove pretty much everything. Um, ultimately, uh, he was at his residence using his phone, and then he was asked if his father lived there. Rosie asked, did his father live there? His father lived there, though, right? And Vito said yes. And he said, well, he was potentially using it. Okay, so that's when that meditation um, came in. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, th- I want you know not to go, not to go off on a sidetrack because I know we still have a lot to cover, but, um, you know, isn't it funny how the story about the being connected to the Wi-Fi at the cousin's house it like completely just disappeared? <laughs> yeah, and so that would have been taken from the transcripts, right? right. You know, from the- uh, well. But they they had his phone logged into the to the to the Wi-Fi. That's, well, that's what they said. That's true. Yeah, they also said this. Yeah, okay. So that was what we were just referring to. There was the August nineteenth, twenty twenty, uh, transcript from Detective Vito and Clinton. I think it was. Wasn't it Aspen that that um, did an Deputy interrogation? Clinton. Deputy Clinton, uh, they did the um, interrogation of Keegan when they did finally arrest him on the charges of CSAM. Um, so it was always debated whether the things from that transcript were true or not. Uh, you know, because that you know we we know it's a common tactic during interrogation for things to be said to try to you know sniff stuff out from uh, from the person being interrogated. And so we did have some confirmations of many things from that transcript from Vito's testimony that were indeed true. And to Aspen's point, perhaps the Wi-Fi connection at uh, on Papa there, I think it was, yeah, it was Papa. Um, at Travis's house. Oh, Travis's house, yeah, Travis Trexler. So, well, anyway. No, 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 it, or was it, the, it might have been at the grandparents. I think it was that he said you said that you were at your grandparents, but uh, your your phone was connected to your you know your Trexler's house, which was right around the corner, and you were surfing uh, and using and looking up pornography, as I believe the way it went down in the transcript. Um, so there was an exchange of photos. From the exhibit, DDD, and that was an exchange of photos between the Anthony Schatz account and Liberty German. And those photos were from um, the press conference release that happened, the presser uh, for the appeal to the public on December 6, 2021. So there were photo, there were eight photos released. They included the Gucci bag, the sports car pictures of money, those, those photos, uh, those are the ones that were exchanged and detective Vito testified to that. So, uh, Klein deleted his, his, uh, things with Libby. He admitted that he, he did block her. Um, and he deleted the Snapchat, uh, chat, uh, from his device. There were other underage females that he communicated with. Some of those were her friends, were Libby's friends. Uh, Detective Vito did confirm that on the stand. Um, so then they got, he got asking about the physical, physical characteristics of BG. Um, and, you know, whether, whether there were similarities there. Vito said that, uh, Keegan was bigger than BG. Um, and his first contact with Keegan was August 19, 2020. That was the day he was arrested. Rosie asked if he, if Vito recalled uh, that Keegan failed the poly, to which Nick immediately objected. And Rosie said, well, we aren't in a trial. Um, uh, Keegan Klein did show deception. Right. And, and he, that's where... Mm-hmm. Sorry. 
that's where Judge Gall stepped in and said, uh, we're looking to, for the nexus here, the admissibility in trial right. for the third party. And then Rosie stated, there, it may not be accurate hearsay evidence. Uh, sorry, may not be accurate, accurate. Hearsay evidence has been allowed. Um, right. And, and, and it I, may I will not say quickly, be allowed in trial. I will say quickly that um, um, Garrett Kurtz also failed a polygraph of Adolfi. Oh, okay. Yep. So Rosie um, said, this is where we learned one new piece of information that Tony Klein had had an interview um, with ISP August 21st, 2020. So two days after they arrested Key and they did interview Tony. That happened at the Peru State Post, Indiana State Police Post. Um, and then Rosie said something that was kind of strange this interaction he said you had some tips that tony may have been involved in some murders and Vito responded no to that so that was kind of strange and then rosie goes into the domestic uh, domestic related violence uh and Vito said i don't recall and then Rosie goes on to s discuss about Tony's uh, step uh, s stepson and um, a shotgun incident with his with Keegan's mother. And um, Vito said yes, uh, Keegan had made some statements about that. Um, Keegan had indicated that Tony had similar clothing to BG, and um, and then Rosie goes on to say that. Keegan eventually was arrested for CSAM and asked to approach Vito at the at the witness stand again. At this time, it was 5:05. Uh, exhibit E E E was entered. There was this was no this was the this this is your crack in the door right here in my opinion. And I haven't heard anybody talk about this. I don't know if I was like I don't know. I, I mind you, I haven't watched or read anything right. much. But this but, was. But but let's be clear, there's no crack in the door. <laughs> Good enough. So this is this is what was testified about. Um and and then and I just saying that I'm just saying okay, I should, maybe I should rephrase that. I was I'm playing. No, I, I should rephrase that because I actually am I don't mean that. This part here is what I'm interested in following um, with respect to Alan, and I do not think that the clients had anything to do with um, the murders, but I do still allow, and this, okay, I'm stepping off of my transcript here. I just will say, I do think that it's possible that there's some sort of peripheral connection with uh, the Dropbox or an app that we know about from Klein uh, pertaining to possibly something that Alan had shared online with someone or directly with that drop off. But I, I do not know, but I'm just leaving well, it open here. God, God help know. us if Brad, I know. God help us if Andrew Baldwin has to go to go to France to get to meet you both <laughs> because that's going to cost like $792,000. Oh my god. I'm just playing. <laughs> oh my god. Good point. Jesus. Okay. Let's not go there. I'm just saying. I'm just stepping off. Okay, so let me just get the one thing that really caught my attention because I had already I know I, I think that it's possible that we already have heard about this. Um and as you said, I've gotten the Klein documents and I did request 270 page um, transcript from his sentencing hearing and included in that was an exhibit and I think it's possible that this is what Detective Vito was about to testify. I do not know for sure but I think it could be. Okay so <laughs> excuse me there was a, an abstract and sentencing order from the CSAM case for Keegan and when ISP investigated Klein for Delphi, uh, that's when the separate case was prompted um, from that investigation, which we know. 
Um, Nick agreed that the exhibit is fine to enter, and Rosie requested that we take uh, Judge Gull take judicial notice on exhibit and exhibit F F F. Uh, Rosie testified, uh, sorry, stated that it was was there a case report for for Klein's case for Delphi? And Vito said yes, a small portion, the start of it, yes. So there is exhibit FFF that was entered that is a report, a case report that came from the the separate investigation for Klein that is pertaining to Delphi. I did do a small little video on that. You'll find it on my channel. It's like one of the only Klein videos I did. So if you want to look at that report, it, it has names we've heard testify here. Uh, Liggett, Liggett, Harshman, and Holman are all in that report from the Klein case for Delphi. Okay. I'm just saying it could be. It could be t something totally different that I have no idea. Okay. So Vito took the devices for that case. Um... And finally, um, Keegan's case um, in Miami, he began talking about Delphi. Through his lawyer, Andrew Aikie, at Grissom Air Force Base on August 19, 2022, there was significant resources extended for that. Holman was involved at Grissom. There was the core team from Delphi involved at Grissom. There was a videotaped interview. And Rosie wanted to know, did Keegan Klein admit to you he was in the area with his father um, in Delphi? And Vito testified that Keegan said that he was at the cemetery. So Rosie wanted to know, did your team set up or make arrangements to describe and take uh, the route they took? Yes. Where they went? Yes. Law enforcement took Keegan Klein without his lawyer. Uh, Lieutenant Holman is the one that took Klein. Vito testified. So at Grissom Base, Klein told them uh, that him and his father had gone in a red jeep. His father had gone into the woods and came back an hour or two later. And this was at the cemetery near the bridge. It was in the daylight hours. When his father returned, he had blood on him. Um, he did not speak to what he had done. This is all the stuff that King had told him at, at Grissom. So, um... He, Keegan stated that his father said that, quote, they had a good time in the woods. This is what uh, Keegan had claimed. He said that they got rid of the weapon before they got home, that they went to the bridge in Peru, and that Tony threw the knife in the in the river, and Keegan threw the phone. And Vito, was, and Vito was asked about this, and he said that they found in the river, so so the river search... This was um, my favorite part. Pardon me? This was my favorite part. All the stuff that was found? No, like when Vito, when Vito responded the way he did. Oh, you do it then, because I'm not even sure we're at the same... I don't know what you have. You go. Take it away. I'm waiting. <laughs> what are you doing? Checking your messages? <laughs> Hello, Aspen. <laughs> um, I was chewing. I apologize. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. You know, I have it at this point. I have that. Um, um, King claimed driving home that he threw the phone in the river, and that Tony threw the knife in. Um, which um. 
is confirmation that this is what led to the Wabash River search. Yeah. And we all know the extent and money and time that went into that search. Um, and um, the only was it the only um, the only retrieve oh the uh, uh, one, and then there was there was a little thing about how the only um, retrievable um, part of the messages between Keegan and Libby was um, was the server, not the actual content. But when they were still referencing the, the search in the Wabash River, he was asked on cross if they found um, a knife and um, a cell phone in the river. And Vito kind of chuckled and he said, oh, we found, we found a lot of knives and a lot of cell phones in the river. Yep. Just none of them were tied to any of them. Yeah. Yeah. So Vito stated that there were multiple cell phones found, multiple knives, a firearm or two, and that no evidence found. There was no evidence found that Keegan told them would be there that was mm -hmm. directly connected. Because Keegan lies. Keegan lies. So he was asked about Ke uh, Klein and uh, Richard Allen connections. Uh, there was efforts made after the arrest. Vito said he testified that they interviewed all kinds of people in Peru. Um, you know, Allen had lived in Miami County, and there were many people had st stated that they had to know each other, uh, that the Allens had lived on Second Street in Peru at one time. Uh, he never connected the Allens to the Kleins. Uh, Nick objected, objected at this point and said, ask an answer. Um, so Vito said they were not able to prove that they knew each other, that there was no digital connection there. So Rosie asked to approach and entered it was a PCA prepared by Detective Vito. It was 20 pages approximately. Okay. So in 2020, uh, Vito took over uh, for for the Klein uh, CSAM investigation. There was interview uh, information for, for uh, digitally from the phones and and used within those devices. Um, it was used for his CSAM case. Um, they were proved the majority of the lies from Keegan Klein. Um, so regarding the the uh, messages sent from the Anthony Shots account from the Libby, um, and this is Nick now that is on uh, uh, continuing on, I guess. I, I guess. It, I guess they must have been interchanging here, sorry. Um, so regarding that message that was sent that was not able to be retrieved, they dis they disproved all of it. There was no red jeep. Uh, from the discovery from his attorney, we were never able to place Tony Klein or Keegan Klein at the crime scene like we were able to do with Richard Allen. That's the quote that Vito said. So there was no, they were never able to place them there. Um, so on February 13, 2017, Tony's and Keegan's phones were both being used at 67 Canal Street. Rosie says, back to, back to Keegan. Okay, there's more than one route to the Monon High Bridge. The Who's Your Heart, Heart Land, uh, sorry, Who's Your Harvester video route is what Keegan said they took to get there. And he said, if I recall correctly, Keegan was a bit confused on the route. Um, for that route, Keegan said he took that they took uh, 
that that was the most direct route from Peru to the Monon High Bridge. And this was Nicholas that was uh, stating this. And then he asked, he, so he wanted to get that on record right at the end. Um, and, that, and then that was it. I, it seems like from my notes here, as that I did miss a few things at the end because there was an objection and a couple of other things here going on about Brad Holder and Abby for some reason. I have no mm. idea why I have that in the middle here. But anyway, he was really, Nick says, is he released for Mr. Pena now? Well, and it was agreed yes, and it was 5.35. Yeah. What, what, what did you have about the retrievable, retrievable parts from their messages? Because that, that, that part was like a little vague to me. Because what I wrote down was the only retrievable parts of the messages between Keegan and Libby was was the scent um was the scent not the actual content so it's like they could see that there was messages to and from yeah. Yeah. but they couldn't actually read what the messages said yeah we have but then they knew about the pictures though yeah so i was curious about that it's kind of strange isn't it now we did hear other testimony i forget which day it was or who we've already talked about this there was further testimony on these messages. Um, on Keegan and her? On the Anthony Shots account. Oh, okay. And, and uh, yeah. So it must have been maybe Holman or... It was a different okay. day. It was, I think, day one. Okay. Um, We did speak about that. So, but, yeah, there... Yeah, it was, it was a bit odd about that. I... I, I I mean, I, I know we'll hear more. Well, it was, it was a piece of information I had not heard before. That the content of them was not readily available. Right. Okay, actually, there was a little bit more discussion here. This was, oh, oh, okay. this, this was funny. This was, this was kind of funny. You'll remember as soon as I say it. Um, they must have been cleaning up a few things about this with, with Abby and these exhibits, and I guess this is, this is, I guess this is where I guess that's why I'm confused, because they must have been, the attorneys must have been clearing up some things, because um, Exhibit III was entered, it's a, a report um, for Tina Garrison, who is an RN from the Adult Acute Psychiatric Unit. So they're, they're tidying up some loose ends here, I think. And then Judge Gall says this, and this is funny, can someone enlighten me who Jerry Klein is? <laughs> And, of course, I'm calling him Tony all this time, but it, Jerry Klein is what was being said. So Judge Gall says, can someone enlighten me who Jerry Klein is? And, and, and then and there's he, this big discussion on who, who Jerry Anthony Klein is, and Nick goes on to say, well, you know, his name is Jer Jerry Anthony Klein, but everybody calls him Tony. <laughs> right. But just hearing them try to, hearing them even try to kind of explain it to themselves <laughs> at first was funny because yeah. there, there was, there was like, well, isn't that the dad? And it was, yeah. isn't, that, isn't that the grandpa? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, yeah. And that was amusing. Yeah, I, 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 I got a kick out of that. Yeah. And then there, and then it looks like here, OJ, they did get a few more things. Like, they must have been cleaning up some stuff. So, OJ, um, there was a brief, there was brief information about Ron Logan and Nicole Robinson, uh, the search warrant for Logan. He lied about his whereabouts on February 13th. Logan's property on February 14th, 2017. Um, note of the items. Uh, this was FBI agent Davies and FBI agent Nicole Robinson. There right. were three things. There was a wall calendar, um, February 13th on Ron Logan's uh, wall. So there was notations made on this wall calendar, February 13th. February 14th, which was the day they were found, and then a blue sweatshirt that they found. Mm -hmm. 